What's up, ladies? What comes to mind when I say the words to you, women's diabetic shoes? Now, I bet you're probably thinking that they're going to be ugly, clunkers, or probably look like grandmother's shoes. If this was a few years ago, I would probably agree with you, but today, not so much. Today, there's a lot more cosmetically pleasing shoes that don't look like traditional medical shoes. I mean, did you even know that there are winter boots or even dress shoes that are considered diabetic shoes that don't look like traditional medical based shoes. But really in order for you to know that you got to know what is considered a diabetic shoe and what is not considered a diabetic shoe. In this video, not only am I going to give you that education of what's considered a diabetic shoe, I'm going to give you a list of the most popular shoes that my female patients have chosen this season coming up. What's up everyone, Wubo here, Grayscale Media, bringing you all the tips and tools in technology, healthcare, and everything in between. And on this channel, I do a lot of tip videos and product reviews to keep you updated on today's healthcare and its technology. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's jump into the video. So before I begin, I just want to emphasize to all of you that it's important that you go see your doctor to get a proper diagnosis of diabetes before you buy any diabetic shoes. So if you're unsure, make sure you go see your doctor. If you don't know where to begin, I've listed the link above and the link below to my first video to give you an education on how to see your doctor and how to properly start this process. So that makes sure you also get the proper treatment. The four characteristics that every diabetic shoe should have are these four right here. They must be Velcro or laced. They must be extra depth because they got to accommodate a diabetic insert that goes inside, which we'll get to in just a moment. They have to have padding inside of them. Roughly about 80 or 90% of the inside has to be padded. And also they have to be durable enough to last close to a year. So let's start with the first characteristic, lace or Velcro. Yes, the shoes have to be lace or Velcro. I am so sorry that loafers and slip-ons and any kind of sandal is not an option here, but lace or Velcro is very important to the characteristics of a diabetic shoe. Now, I'm not saying that you can't wear loafers or any kind of slip-ons at all. What I am saying is that if you're gonna choose to wear those, um, then you better make sure that fit is really good because if you're off by any amount and you promote movement inside of your shoe, you're going to have some problems with your feet. That's where the lace and the Velcro is gonna come into play. You'll be able to control if you want it a little snug or if you want it a little bit loose. Now, a lot of questions I ask about, what about uh, elastic laces? Uh, those are just as close to slip-ons as they can be because you're not able to necessarily control it. And if you do tie it too tight, and you're someone who's living with neuropathy, that's numbness or loss of sensation in your feet, then you're putting yourself at risk of damaging your feet or probably cutting off some kind of circulation. So I would steer away from elastic laces overall, but once again, lace, Velcro, that's the way you wanna go. Next, the shoes have to be extra depth, all right? They have to be able to accommodate a thick, insert that goes inside, which every diabetic shoe should have. Now, what do I mean by that? If you actually go and take your shoe, any shoe you have in your closet, reach inside and see if you can pull out the insert. These are considered inserts that slide inside your shoe. Now, these inserts are very thin and they do nothing for your feet. So most of the shoes that you actually have are gonna have some kind of thin insert like this. If your shoes do not have inserts that can be pulled off, that is a clear sign that your shoes are not gonna accommodate a diabetic insert and they're not the best shoes for your feet. Now, what are diabetic inserts? Diabetic inserts are these soft foam inserts that actually go inside of your shoe and contour to the bottom of your feet. They're very comfortable and the goal is to reduce pressures on the bottom of your feet anytime you're walking. So you wanna make sure that your shoe can accommodate them because they're made pretty thick. And the biggest indicator of the shoe, if they will accommodate it, is if you actually can pull the insert out of it. So just make sure whatever shoe you choose can actually accommodate a thick insert, like a diabetic insert, so that way they can work with your shoe very well together and protect the bottom of your feet. So the next step here is padding on the inside of the shoe. So if you actually go into your closet, once again, I'm gonna use my shoe as an example, and you take a look at your shoe and you see all the stitching on the outside of the shoe. Now feel on the inside. 
if you can feel where that stitching is, then that's actually a frictional surface that's gonna rub against your skin and that's not good. Most shoes that are qualified as diabetic shoes should have padding all on the inside of that shoe or at least 80 to 90% of it is padded because in the long run, if that's not padded and you're walking around and that keeps rubbing your skin, then you're probably gonna have a lot of skin issues down the line. So make sure you have padding on the inside of your shoe. And the last characteristic is the durability. Now, we have come a long way when it comes to shoe wear. Back in the day, you, should, you used to be able to go to a shoe cobbler to keep your shoe for years and years and just have the soles redone. That's not the case today. You really should be replacing your shoes annually. Wearing shoes are two, three, four years, you're putting your feet at a lot of risk and you really should be replacing them. And the reason why that is, is because a lot of these diabetic shoes are really made to absorb impact and shock and protect your feet at all costs. So really sometimes when you look at your diabetic shoes and you see that they're wearing away or breaking down is because they're actually breaking down at the cost of protecting your feet. So that way that is a clear visual signal that my shoes are wearing away, my feet are going to be next, I need to replace them. So hey, if you've been enjoying this video, please make sure you hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you're notified on any future videos that I'll be posting in the near future. Also, I wanna ask all of you out there a question. If some of these shoes you are wearing, please make sure you leave a comment below and tell me how it's been working out for you. As well as if there's some shoes that I did not mention that you feel that a lot of people would benefit from, make sure to leave a comment below. I'm sure a lot of the viewers will appreciate any other suggestions to help them along their journey. All right, so let's get started on the type of shoes and where you can find them. Now, before I begin, I certainly understand that I'm a male and that this Y chromosome of mine actually prevents me from seeing a lot of stylish shoes when it comes to women. I may look at something and think it's very stylish and looks nice, and my patients or my wife may look at it and say those are ugly. That's why I'm suggesting to you guys the most popular shoes that most of my female patients have chosen, especially for this winter season. Now the first category we're going to get into is going to be boots. And the most popular choices of those boots are the Prope Heady, the Prope Helena, and also the Florence by Orthofeet. Now the Prope Heady has some really good traction on the bottom of it. It accommodates a diabetic insert inside and it's kind of ideal, especially if you're living in colder climates. Now don't get me wrong, there isn't a shoe out there that's gonna stop you from slipping on ice. But if you're looking for something with good traction and a little zipper closure, this tends to be very appealing uh, to my patients. Now the Prope Helena is another option as well. It's a nice tall high boot, has some traction on the bottom, accommodates a diabetic insert, and this is more of a lace closure. So this one is just gonna give you a little bit more support and control, especially if you like to tie your shoes very tight. And the last one is the Orthofeet Florence Fur. Now this one tends to be the one that most lean towards because it has that fur look and it looks like a nice shoe. And also it has a Velcro closure. So for all these three options, you have something with a lace, something with a Velcro, something with a zipper closure. But all three of them tend to be the most ideal ones that most of my patients tend to lean towards, especially during the colder climates and when they need something to wear outside their home. So in the sneaker category, we got three of them that tends to be very popular as well. You got the New Balance 847 V3, the Orthofeet Coral, and the Apex Active Walker. So the sneaker category is a little bit tricky. Uh, in my experience, I find that a lot of professionals always recommend New Balances for everything. And I think that's a little bit deceptive. Not that say they're trying to fool you, I just think they need to be very specific when you're recommending these shoes. Just to say new balances are great for your feet, whether you're diabetic or you need orthopedic or any other shoe problem, is as simple as me saying, I don't know, uh, that Toyotas are great to drive in the snow. If you go and buy an all-wheel drive or maybe a four-wheel drive truck, yeah, that'll be good in the snow, but if you try to buy a Prius and drive in New England winter, good luck. So what I'm really trying to say is when someone makes a recommendation for you as far as a shoe and regard it as a treatment or just something that'd be good for running or any other issues that you may be having with your feet, make sure they give you the specific name, the New Balance what, the Nike what. Just simply saying a broad statement like New Balances are great for your feet, 
uh, it's not necessarily true. And with that being said, I, I did list a New Balance in this category. So, but of course this is a specific style that is really catered towards diabetic wearers and it tends to be very popular amongst my patients. It comes in multiple colors and it does accommodate an insert and it does have padding on the inside, which is good. And it looks like an everyday shoe. So if you're looking for a good walking shoe, this tends to be the one, once again, that my patients lean towards and it's very, very popular. The Orthofeet Coral Shoe is a nice looking shoe. It's once again, cosmetically pleasing and it does fulfill all the requirements as far as a diabetic shoe and is A5500 coated, which means it's Medicare approved as a diabetic shoe. So if you're looking for a different option and you wanna steer away from New Balances or any other brands, here's another option for you. It's called the Orthofeet Coral. You should definitely check it out. And last on this list is the Apex Active Walker. Now I do have to warn you, this is not the nicest looking shoe, but it is an active walking shoe that once again, tends to be very popular this season. It does have decent traction on there. It comes in two different colors and it has a nice little Velcro loops on there to give you a little control as far as fit goes. So these are the three most popular sneakers or athletic style shoes that is chosen around this time of the year. And last on the list is the dress shoe category. Now this one is very difficult because in order, a lot of these dress shoes um, don't cover the feet as much and they look very nice, but once again, you're sacrificing a little bit of the control. So let's get started with them. The two most popular ones that seem to be chosen the most, especially when patients are looking for something very dressy, something to wear to church, or something to wear when they're going out to a nice dinner is the Erevan Maya and the Orthofeet Chelsea. Erevan Maya is a nice looking shoe, uh, I have to say so myself. I didn't recognize it as being a diabetic approved shoe, but it does accommodate a soft insert on the inside and it does look like a nice dressy shoe with a heel. And the last one is the Orthofeet Chelsea. Now take a very close look at this one. This one teeters on the slip on realm, but if you look very closely, it does have Velcro closures on the side. I, I would say that this will be an okay option, but once again, you just really got to make sure that the fit is ideal, the fit is optimal, and you're not putting yourself at risk. But overall, the Ortho Feet Chelsea is a solid option. So those are the most popular shoes that most patients choose during this time of the season. So I will list them all below here, and you can have all the links to find them print them out, take them to your doctor's office and see if they can supply them to you using your insurance. But if you can't, at least you have the information below where you can purchase them from the links and actually get them as soon as possible.